I feel like the alternative school movement can be a lot more powerful than it is right now. I don't, that's another thing I don't hear a lot of people say movement. They don't talk about it as a movement. They say like community or, or something, like some other word, but it's the, the word for me, the way I look at it, is movement. Because it can truly be potentially transformative for so many more people than it is right now. I'm Isaac, and I am the conference director. We're here on Thursday, June 24th, which is the first day of the conference. We have about two-thirds of our attendees here, and it's just been absolutely wonderful so far. And I look forward to seeing how the rest of it goes. Today, I'm most looking forward to um, the screening of the film War on Kids this evening, and then the, um, the panel discussion um, that follows afterwards um, with three really amazing people. So I'm very much looking forward to that. Um, there's lots of interesting talks and workshops going on all day. Um, there's the book sale, loads going on. So it's just really great to be here, meeting lots of people um, and having interesting conversations. I'm most excited about seeing what comes at the conference, seeing what discussions come about and seeing where people take what they learn here and how they implement that in their lives, how that challenges them, how that inspires them, how that perhaps has affirms the work that they're doing. So, I'm just really excited in general. I'm so, so honored to have all of you here in this, our seventh annual conference, our largest ever, our most geographically diverse conference ever. It's, it's just absolutely wonderful. And it's perfect weather, 80 degrees outside. I really don't know how, how much better it would I love coming to Arrow because it's a fantastic opportunity for me to learn even more about how I can get out of kids' way and let them learn. I think it's it's addressing um, uh, very, very important issues. I think there's a lot of work that needs to be done in terms of um, making sure that we can apply it uh, to the cultural nuances of, of, of different uh, situations for students. You know, students come from different backgrounds. Um, but uh, but I, I'm enjoying it a, a great deal. I'm having great conversations with folks from, from all over, from Puerto Rico and Texas and, uh, and, and New York and Indianapolis and, and everywhere. So I'm really enjoying that. So. And I've been coming to Arrow for four years uh, at this point. It's because it's a great place to meet people who are doing profoundly uh, high impact work around the country in alternative education and community organizing. And I never have come to Arrow uh, once without walking away, having made um, incredible contacts, making great friends, learning a ton that influences my ability to be effective in the work that I do, and also uh, have been able to give something to other people who and make their more their work more effective as well. Arrow basically has the purpose of networking educational alternatives around the world, and for the purpose of what we call the education revolution. And what that means is we would like to see kids everywhere have the opportunity to have a learner-centered education, something that respects them as an individual, that empowers them, that allows them to grow into what you know, they could potentially be. And we feel that a lot of the traditional schooling doesn't do that, but that what we call alternative education, and that's a very broad range of things, we feel that that does tend to do that. And this would include everything from homeschooling through Montessori, Waldorf, democratic education, uh, some higher educational alternatives, some charter schools. Basically, almost anything that is chosen to become learner-centered rather than curriculum-driven. And what we do is we help parents 
who are trying to find these schools or programs for their kids. We help teachers who want to teach in them, and we help people who want to start them. When our society makes some big changes, which I, I think will be happening in the next few decades, that these ideas, uh, these ways of working with young people um, are going to become more accepted. They will make more sense uh, once we get past the kind of industrial, corporate culture uh, that we live in right now. Uh, it's not a place where you go and read academic papers and, and politely applaud each other. It's, uh, you know, it's real engagement and, and depending on what people's interests are and what, what the energy is like, things, things change uh, quickly. So that, that's what a good school would be like and that's what a, a good conference is like. These ideas are, are, are bubbling up from the grassroots. They're emerging spontaneously when parents and educators start to realize that the old ways just aren't working uh, and, and start looking for other ideas. So this movement doesn't have uh, strong leaders or, uh, or any kind of Bible that everybody reads. It's, it's, a, it's a grassroots movement. It's self-organizing. Um, we're not saying that everybody must have school, but we are saying that every student in school should have a choice to philosophically not go to school at all. We're not suggesting teens just be ignored and abandoned, but that this homeschooling model, this homeschooling approach should work for everybody in the family. We're not encouraging teens to become spoiled brats who just do only what they wish, but that they have a dialogue with their parents about how to spend their time, where to spend their time, how much time to spend on any particular thing, and what to do next, and how to know when they're done. Arrow helps us situate ourselves in this world of alternatives to traditional public school. It helps me understand the various people and the various angles that others are pursuing in challenging, and questioning, and critiquing traditional schooling. Our critique is one. There are many good uh, critiques, there are many good solutions, and I'm glad they all exist. And coming to Arrow reminds me that there's lots of people working on these issues, and there's lots of clever solutions going on, and there's a lot of reasons for optimism and hope, and that this is one of those places to, uh, to feel that, that sense of optimism. There are so many kids who are just failing and they're just losing hope for their own futures and there are our futures and how it would, it, it would probably change needs to happen now. That's just a gathering of maybe sharing ideas on how to, we can fix this sort of issue. It does um, have the capacity to bring people together so that they can work together to, to make these changes because it requires a lot of work and a lot of effort and we need to feel that we have um, connections with other people that are doing similar work because it can feel very isolating sometimes because the majority of people are still um, pretty uh, committed or bought, sold into, bought into um, this idea that education needs to be very much um, an authoritarian, authoritarian model where children are sitting in rows and desks and listening to adults tell them what to do and I think we need to sort of um, make sure that this part of what we're doing here is, is helping each other to spread the word that it, there's alternatives that exist that are working, that are um, in existence, that have been doing um, something very radically different for many years, so that people can see examples of how this education revolution would look. I think as parents in this in this movement, it's very important to, to be a part of it because this movement is looking to involve parents and not isolate parents from the educational experience of their children. People are using critical thinking to look at uh, the way that we teach right now and to see what can we do better. It's the ferment of different ways to go about making value in the world that I think is exciting and useful to anybody. Most of the people at Arrow bring a philosophy with them, uh, and it's a philosophy that they've thought about, not just memorized. So they're very, very useful. I have a philosophy different from, I believe, anyone's here, and yet I appreciate Theirs. I don't think you can teach someone else anything at all. 
that all learning is self-teaching. Otherwise, it's simply memorizing what people tell you to memorize. But that self-teaching process is stifled by ordinary schooling. It's closed down, shut off. We're discouraged from trusting ourselves. And I've spent half of a long lifetime looking into historical examples and current ones of people who broke out of this trap. Brazil, the only major nation in the world running a budgetary surplus, not a debt, is currently headed by a man who grew up without any schooling in the horrible slums of Rio de Janeiro. How is that possible? And that is not a rhetorical question. When you begin to answer how that's possible, you will suddenly see that you are your own prisoner, as you're meant to be. just about to watch Matt Davis' talk um, and yeah, it's one of the things I'm most looking forward to. I'm really, really intrigued about what he's got to say, so, so yeah, it's exciting. It is my pleasure to introduce tonight's keynote speaker, Matthew Davis. 75108. That's my student ID number and at the time this scene that's all they know me by is those five numbers and nothing else. The Indianapolis public school system is like a pipeline to prison. Inmate 75108, I wish they knew me. Us as the youth have to navigate a system that adults create but don't have to account for. Especially if you're black or Latino. They make us integrate, assimilate, then they, dom then they dominate. The public school system was designed for white males and not for me. Generation after generation of intelligent black males diagnosed stupid with ADHD. Well, white folks just say, well, uh, according to the research, that's a part of the Negro's mentality. So if 75108 graduates, I will call that revolutionary. They blame fall, but they blame fall mythology on hip hop music and philosophy, a huge scapegoat for stagnant pedagogy. In this case, it doesn't matter your race, because see, nowadays, ignorance and oppression just doesn't discriminate. It's a game, chess, mindful, tactical, strategic, but they find a way to make us pawns in their master plan and it's not by accident, it is by design. So if all of this truly is a game, then watch that pawn make a checkmate. The next time my teacher sends me off a failure to comply, I hope she sees Matthew Davis instead of seven, five, one, zero, eight.